Hey guys, it is Top 10 Wednesday, and as the title says, I am talking about YA books and series. I have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. In the 10th spot is a trilogy, The Modern Fairy Tales by Holly Black. While the book that I'm holding isn't my favorite, I really, really, really like Ironside. Tithe was unique. This is one of the first fairy books that I read. It has some really interesting themes. The Modern Fairy Tales, it's a trilogy, but book one follows Katie Cat. I don't remember her name. Her name is on the screen. She is known about fairies, and then she meets Roybin, who is a knight in the Unseelie Court. And all of the Fae are being held enslaved to this queen, and in order to free them, Kate ha or Katie has to be a tithe to free them, and she does. Pandemonium ensues. I really like this. It's pretty dark. But I love what I learned about the Fae while reading it. I love Roybin. He's a really cool character. And I just enjoyed it. And that's why it's at number 10. And the ninth spot is a series that is not completed in the U.S. and will not be completed in the U.S. And if I want to keep reading it, I have to become fluent in either French or Japanese. I'm thinking about eventually learning French. It's the Twelve Kingdoms series by Fuyumi Ono. I love the books, especially surrounding Yoko who is a pretty typical Japanese girl, except she's always had bright red hair, which has kind of set her apart. And so she's kind of been this quiet, meek girl, just trying to please everyone and not really knowing who she really is. And then this man arrives and his name is Keiki. And Keiki tells her that she is the Empress of K in a different world and he has to take her there and he does. She is, learns that she is from this world originally and she is being hunted down and she doesn't know why. It is really interesting. Each book is about a different character. My favorites are books one and four. One through four is all that's been released in English. Her story is great and what happens after this book with Yoko, where she goes next is even better and oh, I love it. I love the world building in it. It's just, it's so good, so good. Number eight is a standalone novel and it is East by Edith Patel, if that's how you say her last name. East is a fairy tale retelling of East of the Sun, West of the Moon. Her name is Rose and her mother is very, very superstitious about this belief of what direction she is facing when her children are born. And she doesn't want a north facing child, but she has one and that's Rose. Rose lives up to her northern heritage, if that's what it's called, I don't really know, where the, she wanders and she meets a bear and she kind of falls for this polar bear who's really big, bigger than a normal polar bear. The polar bear can talk and he needs her help in order to break a curse on him. And then she messes up. It's pretty interesting. It includes all these Nordic, I think, yeah, Nordic beliefs about trolls and things. It's an old Northern European legend. I really enjoyed it. And I've read this like three times. Number seven is The Circle Reforged by Tamara Pierce. This is the only book that I own in The Circle Reforged, and it's the only one I haven't read. This is next. I'll get to it eventually. I've already tried reading it and realized I needed to read Battle Magic first. But The Circle Reforged is the third series in the Emelan universe. First you have to read The Circle of Magic, then The Circle Opens, and then it's The Circle Reforged. The reading order that's online and the publication order isn't actually the chronological order. You kind of have to go Battle Magic, Melting Stones, and then Will of the Empress. That's what makes the most sense to me. I read Will of the Empress first, tried to read this, and I just straight couldn't until I read Battle Magic. Anywho, I loved Battle Magic. I really enjoyed Will of the Empress. I love the Emelan universe anyway, but Battle Magic was so so good and the will of the empress was pretty good but i don't have it i've enjoyed so far what i read i have no doubt i'll enjoy this one too number six is a series that i just replaced in hardcover it is out of shot it's really hard to get to so i'm not pulling it out for this but i still have the paperbacks it is wicked lovely by melissa marr wicked lovely follows the story of ashlyn and ashlyn has always been able to see fairies and she has had to follow these rules rule number three don't stare at invisible fairies Rule number two, don't speak to invisible fairies. And rule number one, don't ever attract their attention. And then fairy kings start showing up. 
very, very powerful fairies. And then a fairy king is following her around and she doesn't know why she gets caught in this whirlwind and her life starts going down this very dangerous path that she doesn't want it to go in. Boy, do I love this series. I love it because I couldn't call whether there would be a happy ending or not. And even so, there are some things that are still left unsatisfying. It doesn't have the whole wrapped in a bow type of thing. In order for them to get their happily ever after, sacrifices have to be made. And it's so good. I love that. Raven's reading it and I and everyone else built up the hype too much and Wicked Lovely isn't that great. And I actually agree Wicked Lovely does have some problems. The first book, don't be like, oh, this is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be... No. I got into it. Book two, I did not like at all. I don't own it at all. It's all right. Yes, the story needed to be told, but I wasn't too fond of it, so I don't own it. I never have. I never will. But I do really, really like this series. I'm really glad that I read it, and I'm very happy that I got it. Raven ordered it for me. I have to pay her back. So technically, I did order it, but she ordered it from a seller, and I got all of them in first editions. Ah! Number five is another Tamora Pierce book in her other universe, the Tortal universe, and it's Daughter of the Lioness. Ooh, this is good. I have a review for Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen, and I'll link those down in the doobly-doo, but I love these books. They are so stinking good. OMG, are they good. It follows the daughter of the most famous series by Tamora Pierce, The Song of the Lioness, with Alana. Her daughter is Allie, and her and Alana don't see eye to eye, and they kind of have this fight, and so she sails down the coast, which she's done a million times, to go to her grandfather's house. She doesn't make it. She's captured by pirates and is sold as a slave in the Copper Isles. There she learns that there is all this racial upheaval. The natives of the Copper Isles have been under the foot of the Pale Conquerors, and the trickster god has heard and he has had enough and he decides he's going to put his queen, hence Trickster's Choice and Quick Trickster's Queen, and Allie has to help him. It is so good. It doesn't end the way that I expected or even necessarily wanted, but it is so well done. I love Allie. I love the characters. I love the world. I love that you can't really call where it's gonna go. Oh, it's so good. It is so so good. I definitely recommend you read this. Five out of five stars for both of them. Number four has my name in the title, but it is The Lorian Legacies by Pitticus Lore. Now for those of you, there is controversy about this. Pitticus Lore originally was two people, and then after the power of six, there was a fight in between the two people, and the guy Oprah yelled at, I can't remember his name, it's on the screen. He was one of the people involved, and he's not a good person. He mistreats people, and he's a known liar. He's not a very good man. But I have heard that he, after the power of six, he didn't write the rest of them. He wrote the first two or three and then he was done. He was gone. He was out of there. Now it's not by him. And there is a jump in the quality of the story. I love this story. Not just because my names are on the books. Yes, yes, it's on the books. But also because it's really good. This is a sci-fi. Four is an alien. He is part of nine, well technically 18 aliens from the planet Lorien that was destroyed by a race called the Mogadorians. And the Mogadorians are trying to conquer Earth. And they knew they couldn't conquer Earth with planet Lorien in the way that the Lorix would protect them. They killed them all except for 18 and they are on planet Earth. A further six have been killed and now they are coming after four, right when he falls in love with a human girl. It is so good. I have no idea where it's going to go. I know the next book that's coming out, I think there's one or two more coming out and then that's it. There's only one more in the main line, which is the I Am Number 4 books, and then there's the Lost Files, and I think there's one Lost Files coming out next, and then the final book, the end of everything, and I have no clue how it's going to happen, and so much stuff has happened so far, and oh my goodness. I'm not too fond of the actual covers. This is a movie cover, and I actually kind of prefer it because they're not very pretty. This is my least favorite. It's Meh. Number three is one that I got into just before booktube. I wanted to read it and so I have reviews for everything that I've read so far, but is the Divergence series by Veronica Roth. It's 
Sorry, I'm flashing you. Ooh, do I love this series. I really, really like Divergent. Insurgent was not as good, and then Allegiant was really good. I know a lot of people hated Allegiant. I'm not one of them. I loved it. It's so good. I love the universe. I love that you think you know how the story's gonna go, and then the end of Insurgent, you don't really know, and then Allegiant comes along, and you have no clue. Oh, man, it's so good. This is a dystopian, and Triss is a normal girl, but she is about to have her choosing ceremony where she has to choose which of the five factions she has to join. There is a test that is supposed to help her and she takes it. And instead of telling her which faction she's supposed to be in, she learns she is divergent and tests positive for three different factions. And that marks her for death. And so she has to hide who she is, choose a faction, stay away from the government. And of course, that's not what happens. It is so well done. The movies are pretty darn good. I know some people had issues with Insurgent, but I thought it was really well done. I liked it. I like the books. I can't wait to read four. I just got it in April. Oh man, I love it. I'm so glad that I just got these in April too. The collector's edition. So oh, they're so pretty. But I really, really love this universe. Definitely had to be number three. Number two is another series that I just got into thanks to booktube. I've even met the author and all of my books by her are now signed. It's The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. OMG, do I love this series. Now there is a bit of confusion. Is this science fiction? Is it fantasy? Veronica Roth herself, I remember her saying she thinks and classifies it as science fiction but she leaves it up to the publishing company. She's like, I just write the stories, but I think it's science fiction. There's some fantastical elements. It reads more science fiction to me. A lot of people put it in fantasy, whatever. To each of their own. But the story follows Cinder, who is a mechanic. And in this futuristic Earth, people who are cyborgs, people who had part of them replaced with a mechanical limb, so people with prosthetics, are considered subhuman. And she's being mistreated by her stepmother, well, her foster mother who is raising her and she basically is a servant to the family. But then Prince Kai is holding a ball and every girl is invited, including the cyborg Cinder, especially since she meets him on the street. But then the queen of the moon, Luna, the people who live on the moon, comes to the Eastern Commonwealth where she lives and is eager to marry Prince Kai. There's other things going down this is basically Sailor Moon meets Cinderella in the future. It's really good. That sounds really lame. I was not certain I'd like Cinder and then I read it and I wasn't too thrilled with it reading it and then the ending was so good and I had to know what was next and then I read Scarlet and then I read which was way better and then I read Cress and it was even better and I just read Fairest. I have a review for that. I'll link that down in the doobly-doo as well as for the entire Lunar Chronicles. It is so good. I love this series. I cannot wait for winter. But my number one, I've only read three of the five books that have been released because I didn't know about the other two. Because my library doesn't have it. But it is the Knight and Rogue series by Hilary Bell. Boy do I love this. In a fantasy world where there are no more knights, Michael is a knight and Fisk is the squire that he saved. So Fisk has to serve him as a squire even though he thinks Michael is completely bonkers. Then they take on a job to rescue a lady who is being held ransom. Then they find out she wasn't being held ransom. Some random guy did not kidnap this poor woman. She was under arrest. She was facing criminal charges and they just let her loose. And so they have to track her down before both of them end up in some serious, serious trouble. This is hilarious, but it's also really well done. They go through all these crazy adventures. Again, I've read the first three. I've read The Last Night, Rogue's Home, and The Player's Ruse. And I love them all. They're all five out of five stars. They're so well done. I can't wait to get my hands on books four and five. I don't know when or where I'll be able to. I'm going to have to order them myself, apparently, if I want to read them. But I've read several books by Hilary Bell, and I've loved almost all of them. Her most famous fantasy series, I actually didn't enjoy that much. It wasn't that good. But I like the Goblin Wood. I like this. I like the Wizard Test. I can't wait to read the Nether 2 in this series, but it's definitely my favorite young adult series ever.
I have not fallen for a young adult book within the first few pages as much as I fell for this with Fisk going on and on about how Sir Michael is a bonkers out of his mind and then they start to learn more about each other in the first two books and by the third book they are like brothers and they would die for each other and they do all these crazy things because they're knights he's nice and a squire in a world where there are no knights and squires and it's always so good it's so good all right thank you guys so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe to see more every friday it's a book review and every first and third wednesday of the month is top 10 wednesday Good luck with your reading, and I hope I gave you some books that you're willing to try. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye! I did these backwards. Good job, Laura. Stack them upside down. And she does. Actually, that's not exactly right. Who becomes the Empress of K. Uh, that's not right who finds bleh. so i'm holding up melting stones i can't wait to read this i got just got this and i got it in hardcover her daughter is Allie. she's captured by pilots pilots she's not captured by pilots she's captured by pirates she's captured by pirates and is sold as a slave in i lost what the isles are called Copperas. And then there's the Lorian Legacies. Not the Lorian Legacies. I just got it this in May, April, May. People who are android, not androids, cyborgs. In a world where knights don't exist, it doesn't have names. Michael. And I don't remember his name. Fisk. I think that's his name. Yeah, I think it's Fisk.